merging the Office of Personnel Management and the General Services Administration wouldn't fix problems at the agency, according to a panel Congress commissioned. The National Academy of Public Administration report lists 23 new recommendations for OPM. Linda Springer is former director of the Office of Personnel Management and former controller at OMB. Linda, thanks very much for coming on the program. You were outspoken when this merger was first proposed that you thought it was a bad idea. What's your takeaway from what Napa has reported to Congress on this? Francis, thanks for having me, first of all. And I think that NAPA did a real service uh, for this issue by mostly shifting the focus away from the question of whether we need a central independent personnel management agency to focusing more on what that agency should look like going forward, what it should do to fix itself. And I think that that really was a very important contribution. My takeaway from this report, Linda, confirmed by Peter Levine and Janet Hale on our Sunday program, two members of the team that put this report together, was they want to see OPM move from being a more tactical organization to a more strategic organization. What would you like to see, whether it's contained in these recommendations or something else just that you know from your experience, what would you like to see to make that happen? What does that require and what would be the steps in your view to make that happen? Well, I concur with uh, their recommendation in that area. And I guess I'd say it a little bit differently that uh, what I think they should be doing at OPM going forward is really being innovative. Uh, when I hear the word strategic, I think about having foresight, uh, being uh, uh, anticipatory as to what the needs of the federal workforce and the federal community will be and what those services need to be. I think they'll need to develop more of an original capability for uh, coming up with those solutions organically within the agency, but also do a better job of reaching out to the broader human capital community, both within government and outside, to be able to leverage, identify and leverage solutions that they could bring to government. Obviously, they'd have to be adapted for the government framework. But I really think in addition to doing all the bread and butter work, if you will, at a, at a higher level, the emphasis on that type of anticipatory, innovative solution development and implementation, I think that's a real uh, takeaway from this report that's critical. One of your comments there, Linda, jumps out at me because of comments that Chico's have made to me over the years, and not just in this administration, not just under uh, the previous administration, but just throughout all the time that I've been covering this space. You talk about reaching out to the broader human capital community, both in and out of government. One of the under uh, underdeveloped, I guess, uh, organizations is the Chief Human Capital Officers Council. Chico's tell me all the time they wish that it was a more robust organization. What do you think that would look like and how do you think that could contribute to this vision that you've laid out and that Napa's laid out of OPM as a, a more strategic, more innovative organization? Agree 100% that there needs to be better engagement. I would imagine that what's happened in recent years where that has slipped to some degree is the turnover in leadership, the lack of leadership uh, at agencies, but also at OPM. I think there needs to be a reinforcement of that. You know, if you go back to the days when Senator Voinovich was the real proponent of getting that uh, established and others, uh, I think we need to get back to that. Uh, I, I had always thought it was important to be sure to include the deputy Chicos because they had a lot of the institutional knowledge and knowledge of their agencies in the workforce. So this certainly should be, uh, uh, the council should be revitalized, regular meetings, important meetings, uh, not just top down, but really collaborative between OPM and the, the council members. But again, to be sure there's a, a major uh, involvement of the deputy Chicos as well as the Chicos themselves. There are two issues that this report addressed that I think you have very close up firsthand experience with, and that is the funding model of OPM. Uh, Napa recommended that uh, Congress move it from a fee for service model to an appropriated model. And the other issue is IT modernization. And you saw firsthand the challenges that are involved in, in trying to move some of the legacy systems at OPM, mission delivery systems, uh, to, to more modern, more digital uh, solutions. 
what do you see in this NAPA report that's actually doable given what you know about the challenges of implementing such big things inside an agency like OPM, Linda? Well, one of the things that uh, is available to OPM and other agencies is the uh, Technology Modernization Fund, which I believe is, is still being funded by Congress. Um, and I think that marries up the two issues that you mentioned there in the context of IT funding and then dealing with the IT uh, needs. It's clear that they are still there. They're very difficult challenges. Uh, but I do think that um, under a fresh approach to the operation of OPM, at the same time that the strategic part of it is being refreshed and developed further, that uh, both of those things can be handled. And uh, I do believe that appropriation is a better way to go than fee for service in this context, because I just think that we've learned a hard lesson that uh, the fee for service model uh, in this context can be problematic. And so to get uh, a stronger, more secure footing, uh, I, I think that uh, a greater uh, reliance on appropriated funds. And again, with that, the oversight that comes from it and guidance from Congress and others, I think is, is the right way to go right now. We have about 30 seconds left, Linda. What will you watch moving forward? What are the markers that you look for either from the administration or from Congress? Well, I view this uh, really, Francis, as uh, by analogy, similar to uh, opening a new restaurant or really refreshing a restaurant. The OPM director, and the key here will be, will that OPM director uh, with their leadership team be able to open that new restaurant and, and do it at the same time that they're still serving customers in the current format. Because OPN can't, can't stop and say, we're gonna pause for six months, stop doing what we're doing, and then we'll have a grand reopening. They need to do both things. So current operations need to continue, but at the same time, there needs to be that refresh so that there's a grand opening and a vision for the new OPM that incorporates many, of, if not most, of the elements in this report. What I'm going to look for is do when they issue that vision, when they have their plan, does it come from OMB or does it come from OPM? And I hope it's OPM. So all of those things, uh, and I'm looking for that and to happen in a relatively quick time frame. Linda Springer, thanks very much. It's great to have you back on the program. Thank you very much, Francis.